Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today's video I'm going to be adapting on our day night cycle which we started quite a while ago so sorry it's taken me so long to get back around to it but I am now back with this and today we're going to be going over saving and loading the time of day. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to do. So I'm going to go in, you can see it started at 12, day 0, midday, all that good stuff. I'm going to wait till it's a later time so let's say we'll wait till 5 in the afternoon and then we'll press 1 which is how I'm going to save it. Uh, but you can obviously set it up to be however you like. So we've just hit 5 o'clock now, so I'm going to press 1, exit, and when we go back in it should be around 5 o'clock with the same time, same kind of sunlight as well. So the sun is in the same position. We hit play and as you can see that has worked perfectly for us like so. So again I'm saving when I press 1, but you can change that to be what if you like. So when you press a button in your main menu or when you exit the game to the menu or anything like that. But that's how I'm doing it and I'm loading just by opening the game. So let's wait to get to day one. So there we go. Now we've just gone to day one. Press one to save, exit, go back in. All worked perfectly like so. So this is what we we'll make today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a save game blueprint. And this is how we're going to actually save it. So where we're going to store the variables. So anywhere in our content browser, we're going to right click, go to blueprint class, open up this drop down menu of all classes here and search for save game. I'm going to hit it and then press select. I'm going to name this time save game. You can name it whatever you like. Just don't name it save game because that will confuse you later on. And we're going to open it up straight away. Again here you simply just store the variables which you want to save. So variables which I want to save are the sun rotation and the time of day. So I'm going to hit the plus variable here naming this sun rotation. I'm going to change that to be a rotator variable, so this one here. I'm going to hit the plus variable again, and I'm going to name this one time of day. You can name that one if you like, so time, time of day, seconds, because that's the actual variable we're going to save. Name it whatever you like. And I'm going to change this to be a float. And once we've done that, we can compile and save, and that is all we need to do in this blueprint, because again, this is just storing the variables, and those are the variables which I want to store and save. So once we've done that, we can close it, and now we need to open up our level blueprint. So I'm going to go to blueprints, open level blueprint up at the top here. Because this is where we actually have the code for the time of day, as you can see here, so the day night cycle, sorry. So what I'm going to do is just find some empty space, right click, add a custom event, and I'm going to name this one save game, like so. And out of this, what I'm going to do is get a does save game exist, and the slot name, I'm going to right click on it, promote it to a variable, naming this save slot one. You can name that one if you like, and the reason I'm doing it in a variable is just because it saves us having to then rewrite it out so many times, making sure it's spelled correctly. This just allows us to do it once, and then if we want to change the name, we can do very simply as well. After this, I'm going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting the condition into the return value there. Because again, we want to see if this is true or false, so the branch will do that for us. If it's true, so the save game does exist, we want to load it. So true will be load game from slot, like so, with the slot name is going to be that save slot one variable we just made. And in the return value of this, we want to right click, promote that to a variable as well, naming this save game object. We'll connect that in there. And then false of this branch, so if the save game doesn't exist, we want to create the save game. So false will be create save game object like that. The save game class is going to be the save game we just made, which I named mine time save game. And this here is why you don't want to name it save game, because there is already one with that name. So mine is time save game there, like so. And out of this, we're going to again set that save game object we just made, connecting that into there, and the return value into there as well, again, like so. So now we're going to be able to load or create a save game. And now we just want to save something to that save game, which we either loaded or created. So out of one of these, we're going to cast to our save game, which for me is time save game like so. And that's going to go into both of the set save game objects like that. And the object is just going to be our save game object, which we've created there. And so out of this is where we can simply now get and save these different variables. So as time save game, we're going to set sun rotation. And the sun rotation we want to set it to is going to be the current rotation of the sun, which is the light source. So we can scroll down here to our time cycle code, and you can see we have light source. We're going to select that, hit Control C, 
go back up to our save code and hit Control v like so and now we have a reference to our light source. And out of this we're going to get actor rotation connecting that into the set sun rotation there. So now we're going to be getting the current rotation of the sun and setting that in our save game. So that is now the saved position of the sun which is going to work perfectly for us. And then as time save game again we're now going to set time of day. So we're setting the sun rotation and the actual time as well. So set time of day, this wants to be our seconds variable which we have inside of our blueprint already. So get seconds, connect into time of day there. And that is going to be saving the sun rotation and time of day. But it's not saved just yet, all we've done is we've set the variables. So to save it, we can come out of this and save game to slot like so. The save game object being our save game object variable we made earlier and the slot name being our save slot one variable we also made earlier as well. Compile, save, and now we've set up saving the game. Very, very simple. What we're doing is we're seeing if the save game already exists and then dependent on that, we're gonna either load it or create a new one. And then we're simply setting the variables inside of that save game to be the variables that we actually have inside the level. So the sun rotation or position and the time of day and then saving that to the slot, which we either just loaded or made. So that's saving the game sorted. Now we need to set up loading the game. So what we're going to do is just underneath this, we're going to right click again and add another custom event, naming this one load game. And this one is just as simple. So I'm just going to move that down here like so. And I might move this down just a little bit as well, like that. And out of load game, what we're going to do is again, does save game exist with the slot name being the same save slot one variable we made earlier once again. And again, the branch out of return value going into there because we want to see if this is true or false. This time we only want to do something off of true because if the save game doesn't exist, then we've got nothing to load. So we don't want to attempt to load it. But if it's true, then it does exist. We do want to load it. So true will be load game from slot like so with again, the slot name being a save slot one variable we made earlier. And then the return value of this will not set anything. We'll just go straight into a cast to time save game like that. And then very simply out of this, we're just gonna get the variables we saved. So as time save game, we're going to get sun rotation, and now we're going to set the actual sun's rotation inside of this blueprint. So again, get a reference to our light source here. Out of this, instead of getting the actor rotation, we're going to set the actor rotation like so. And again, new rotation is simply just going to be the sun rotation variable, which we have saved there. And then we're going to do the same thing for the time. So as time save game, we're going to get time of day and this one we're going to set the seconds variable so set seconds to be that time of day float we have saved there and again that is now going to work for loading our saved variables we have here so again we're going to see if the save game does exist if it does we're going to load it and then get the variables for sun rotation and the time of day and set that to be the actual sun rotation and time of day for when we load up our game compile save and that's the saving and loading done so now all we need to do is actually allow the player to save and for the game to load this. So loading is very simple. We're gonna go up to our event begin play node, which we have here. If you haven't used it yet, then you can use it. If you have used it, then just do what I'm about to do. I'm gonna to go to the end of the event begin play code and simply call function load game. So now when we load up the game, it's going to load our save game as well and set the correct time of day and all that good stuff. Compile, save, and now the actual saving part is going to be a little bit more complicated, but you should be able to understand it pretty easily. So what I want to do is I want to do this from my player blueprint into the level blueprint. And the reason I'm doing that is just because you probably won't have it the same way I do. You'll probably have it inside of a widget or something. So maybe when you press escape to exit the game, it will save. So you're going to want to do that in a different blueprint to the level blueprint, which is why I'm showing you how to do this now. So I'm going to minimize this and open up my character blueprint or just the blueprint in which you want to save in. So for me, again, that's character blueprint. And I'm going to create an event dispatcher. And I'm going to name this one save game like so. Now I'm just going to do this off of the one keyboard event. But again, do this however you like. But however you are doing it, make sure you just call that save game event dispatcher there. So just drag it in and hit call. Compile, save. That's all you need to do in that blueprint. So we're going to minimize that like so. Now off of event begin play once again, 
I'm going to hold down S, left click to get a sequence, connecting then zero into that code, and then one into this new code. And the new code for me is going to be casting to the blueprint which the event dispatcher is in. So for me, that is cast to third person character, like so. Object for me is obviously going to be get player character, but it will be different for you depending on which blueprint you're using. If you're using the player character, it's going to be the same thing, obviously. And then as your blueprint, so for me as third person character, I'm going to bind event to, then the name of your event dispatcher, which for me was save game. Press that there, so now we have the binding event to bind our event dispatcher. And the event wants to connect into the save game custom event we made there. So now whenever we call that event dispatcher, which for me is pressing 1, it's going to fire off this save game custom event here. So pressing 1 is going to save the game, and loading up the game is going to load the save game. So we can compile, save, hit play, and this should be working perfectly for us. So again, I'm just going to let the time run a little bit just so we can test it out. So let's again try it with 5 o'clock. So 5 o'clock, that was probably closer to 6. The sun had started setting, let's hit play. And that one didn't work, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so the problem is I'm being a bit of an idiot. Select our save slot one variable. You can see the default value is empty. I could have sworn I changed it and set it to something, but clearly I didn't. So make sure that you do have that done as well. So the save slot one, I'm gonna set the default value to be save game one. Now obviously you change that to be whatever you want, compile and save it, but we need to make sure that it has a name so it has something to create. So again, we're creating the variable so we don't have to keep changing it everywhere else, so it makes our lives easier. But for it to work, we do actually need to set it, obviously. So again, my bad for that. I thought I did do it. So if we hit play, this should now work. So again, if I wait for five o'clock, we've got that time. We've got the sun setting, so the sky looks different. Just gone five, hit one, exit, hit play, and it has now loaded with that time. Again, it was closer to six, and the sun in the same position in the sky as well. So it's working perfectly. That was just my bad doing something a little bit dumb there. Again, this does work perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video, so we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up, so we've got the save and load for our time of day, so it's going to save the sun position and the time as well. So that's day one, 11 o'clock, sky, with the sun in the middle of the sky there, working perfectly like so. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.